we start a new chapter called the called the electromagnetic waves <coughs> okay we have seen that we saw that that electric current produces a magnetic field okay so we know that electric current current produces a magnetic field or magnetic field okay that 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 was simple that was the subject matter of chapter 4 okay now later when faraday showed his law of electromagnetic induction the most important take away from that law was that it is not only that that electric current produces a magnetic field a time varying magnetic field also produces an electric field because there was current due to there was an induced emf and hence the hence the current and if there is an induced emf it means there was an induced field so 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 a time varying it happens both the days right a time varying magnetic field produces an electric field this is what was the the whole connotation of electromagnetic induction okay so so time varying magnetic field produces an electric field that is faraday's law of electromagnetic induction faraday's law of electromagnetic induction okay okay now we have seen and we'll see that the nature is quite a dual kind of thing okay so so whenever something happens the reciprocal the vice versa thing also happens so a question was asked by maxwell that does a time varying electric field electric field produce a magnetic field okay yes. the answer to this was given by maxwell as yes yes okay yes and and this is what we'll see led to the understanding of or or possibility of existence of an electromagnetic wave later it was confirmed that they exist not only that okay not only that it was confirmed that these electromagnetic waves move at the speed of light okay so it was found that that the time varying electric and magnetic fields self sustain each other it was found that the time varying electric and magnetic fields self sustain each other self sustain each other 
and can propagate through can propagate even through the vacuum through the vacuum okay they can propagate even through the vacuum at the speed of at the speed of light okay now the question was why should they have this preferential 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 attraction for the speed of light what is there with the speed of light why speed of light okay why specifically speed of light and later it was found that light itself is an electromagnetic wave which itself is an electromagnetic wave so what happened we had electricity we have magnetism and we have light and they got all unified okay the whole set of equations that he formulated are known as as ampere maxwell equation and along with some divergence laws that that you'll study in higher chapters it is possible to solve for the speed of and the nature of electromagnetic waves that's how they got to know that it will be equal to the speed of light it was a completely mathematical formulation okay so 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 we know that it is it is uh, it is an uh, the electromagnetic waves they are moving at at the speed of light and they can travel through vacuum now this traveling through the vacuum was something that foxed the scientists for a long time okay but later when you came to know that light is an electromagnetic wave and and it can travel from sun to you and and it carries energy okay and the uh, other thing that was important was that these electromagnetic waves they carry energy so the hmm? they they are contained in that electromagnetic waves carry energy that energy will come from where from the source so for example in the fusion reaction whatever energy is being produced that gets carried away by the light in your in your tube lights and in your incandescent lamps the energy that is being being dissipated that is a part of it gets carried away by light okay okay so so some of it is heat as in incandescent lamps it is primarily what what heating which produces light but the light component of it carries some amount of energy okay so if we are able to to reduce the heating by any lamps then its lighting efficiency goes up that means most of the energy you are converting into light so the so the tube lights and the led lights that's why they are more efficient okay they also carry energy and momentum that we'll see later that, that they carry energy as well as momentum okay so so now maxwell formulated a set of equations okay maxwell formulated a set of equations involving involving electric and magnetic fields
involving electric and magnetic fields, their sources, charges and charge densities. Okay, these are called Maxwell's equations. Okay, they are called Maxwell's equations. Together they are nothing but what we have already studied, but in 3D they actually change change shape. So Maxwell's equations, maybe no one is going to ask you about that, but it is it is it is a collection of what we have already studied. So E dot DA that we had studied as E dot DS is equal to Q upon epsilon naught. What is this? You can write E dot ds, no issues. E dot ds over the surface is equal to Q by epsilon. What is this? This is Gauss's law for electrostatics. Okay. Then we have V dot ds is equal to what is Gauss's law for, for magnetism? B dot ds is equal to 0. That is Gauss's law for magnetism. Then we have E dot dl is equal to minus d phi upon dt. E dot dl is equal to minus d phi by dt. This is what? E dot dl is what? That is what? E dot dl. So that is f dot dl. If I take a one, one unit charge, then it is qe. So this is the force on that charge dot dl. So that is nothing but but the voltage, the e, the voltage, right? The potential. So this is this is what this is actually Faraday's law. So V is equal to minus d phi by dt. This is the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. This is electromagnetic induction EMI, not the equated monthly installment. Okay and and apart from that, the last one that we'll go in some detail just now, that is V dot DL is equal to mu naught I conduction plus mu naught epsilon naught D phi E upon DT. This is electric flux. This is magnetic flux. Okay. This is Ampere Maxwell law. We will we'll discuss more about this. Ampere's Maxwell law. Fine. That means it is a closed integral. So it is a closed integral over a curve. This is also over a curve. This is over a surface. This is over a surface. So you have to enclose the curve. So you end at the same point from where you started. Okay. Fine. Now we'll 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 uh, see the last one, the Ampere's Maxwell law, in some detail and how he was able to come up with the concept of something called 
an electromagnetic wave wave right 